This was supposed to be a review of the new and obscure iRange X radio, but this device is so flawed that our video quickly took a sharp turn. We dissected it and managed to fix all of the shortcomings, so stick around and you might actually learn something today. I'm Mark from Drone Lab and this is iRange X, or how not to make a radio controller. The iRange X is a gamepad-shaped controller that's very rich in features. It is a little bulky and the placement of the switches is a bit awkward, but so far none of this is a deal breaker. Banggood sells it for $85 as a multi-protocol transmitter and on that ground it definitely delivers. It works with many receivers like the Flysky or Tyrannus, as well as very many toy drones while performing much better than the original toy transmitters. It's based on the Deviation firmware, which is an open source project offering alternative firmware to a set of radios made by Valkera. However, the use of this open source project doesn't seem to be sanctioned in any way. It's not officially supported by the developers of this project, and there doesn't seem to be any effort made into fitting this software to this particular hardware. It doesn't even have any instruction manual, and that really is an issue. The Deviation firmware is supposed to be the more advanced alternative and it really has a lot of very complex features. But the hardware is a different story. It seems like whoever designed this controller didn't really know what they're doing. But instead of speculating, let me just show you the problems that we identified. When you turn on the controller, you're immediately greeted with this horrible screech. You can kind of hear a melody in the background, but it's overwhelmed by a very annoying beep. Scoping the speaker signal shows that there is indeed a tone there, but we can also see a phantom frequency, much higher than the desired tone. It turns out that they use the buzzer with a built-in tone generator, and it's always imposing its tone on whatever sound you try to play through it. Swapping it out with the cheaper part that doesn't have the generator immediately solves the problem. Easy fix. The next issue they actually admit to on the Banggood page. They say that when you turn off the transmitter, please wait for one minute before turning on again. It needs some time to run the program. Indeed, you can't just turn the thing off and on again. It simply doesn't boot. But I don't believe that it's running any program. In fact, if you measure the current consumption, as soon as you switch it off, the current drops to zero. 9 microamps to be exact, so it's definitely not running anything. We trace this problem to something that looks like a brownout detection circuit. There's a 500 kilo ohm resistor there that if you replace it with a 20k, the issue is instantly fixed. It's that simple. Again, a wrong part in a wrong place makes the whole thing broken. The final issue is the most serious one, and it has to do with the gimbals. I'm not just talking about poor quality and squeaky sounds, they don't return to the midpoint when you release them. What happened here is the potentiometer and the actual stick don't fit very tightly. There's a little bit of a gap. So first of all, there's wiggle space around the midpoint, but also if you push it all the way to the end and then release it back, the spring won't push the potentiometer back to the middle position. The gap will just leave it slightly twisted towards the direction that you just moved it. Push it to the other end, release, and the same problem occurs, but this time you're stuck at a different value. That's a very serious problem, because you can't fix it by just calibrating the thing. It will always have this drift. The only way to fix this is to make the fit tighter. You can just put some tape around the potentiometer, we used Captain Tape, and it works pretty much okay. But of course the manufacturer should review their injection molding to make sure that these parts actually fit. All of these problems boil down to quality control, which is sometimes misunderstood as quick check. In a quick check, you would see if the device turns on, if it makes a sound, if moving the stick changes the output, and if it turns off. And if so, ship it. Don't ask questions about if the sound is okay or if the output actually follows the stick correctly. Just ship it. We've been recently developing a way to test a range of transmitters so we took the opportunity to actually test our first prototype. Meet Rangey the range tester. We went out to compare the iRange X with another cheap radio, the Flysky i6S. Okay. At a short range of 200 meters and in direct line of sight, they both perform pretty much perfectly, with almost no packet loss whatsoever. Okay. 
it's done now. But once we moved 350 meters away and behind some tree cover, the story changed. While the fly sky had some loss of packets. Okay, we have it. Fly sky significant loss of contact. Oh my god! The Iron X was pretty much unusable. I have the data for the long range obscure Iron Range X and it's horribly bad in this attempt. And just to have all the tests finished, we also did a quick latency measurement and to our surprise, with an average of 13 and a half milliseconds, the Iron X happened to be the fastest radio we tested so far. As of now, Banggood says that all of the previous issues of this radio are fixed, but even if that's true, I can't recommend this radio to anyone. The poor range, the horrible build quality, and the fact that the firmware seems to be stolen from an open source project, I honestly can't recommend this. Don't get me wrong, I'm all up for cheap alternative options and innovative competition, but this isn't innovative, it's stolen firmware, and this isn't even cheap, it's $85. There are just much better options there that aren't horribly flawed. Maybe we'll get something better next time, but until then, thanks for watching.